guys, it's 2 on Maxwell here. Welcome to another edition of We Are Wrestling. We're just two weeks away from crowning glory. I'll be a wee bit quieter because it is the middle of the night, but I get my booking groove on. Started booking out a couple of shows back to back and just want to keep on booking and recording more. So here we go, hopefully a good show. Eight segments here. Mixed between angles and matches. With a big debut, as you can probably see here, which we'll explain during the show as well. Looking again from the Summit Busby Centre, hoping to capitalise on a bit of uh, the hotbed there, so hopefully get more and more fans coming in. And just generally hoping, with as much momentum as possible, going into Crown and Glory. But without further ado, guys, on. Or on. Just get straight into the show, as always. For a start, thanks for watching, guys. It's deeply appreciated. If you enjoyed it, remember to hit the old thumbs up. Remember to check out everybody else's YouTube content on the Fantasy Bookers Reddit. Subreddit on Reddit, honestly, so many talented guys there. Check them out. But here we go, it is. We are wrestling our time. So we start off another episode of We Are Wrestling Our Time with the most lovable general manager in the world, our very own Mad Braddocks. I will tell you, cocky pricks in attendance, how are you all doing? The crowd boos him. He says, I love you all back just as much. And then he blows him a kiss. But anyway, on to important matters. I have some great news involving our women's division. Now, we've been struggling for numbers in the women's division. To com basically to compete with what we have is pretty much the best world class level talent in the, women in the world regarding women's athletes. So we're out and cut a deal with an old friend. And we have a former UK and Ireland talent returning. So, ladies and gentlemen, here to wrestle tonight and take part of a special triple threat match at Crown and Glory. That we are wrestling women's championship. The last kicker, Becky Lynch. So Becky Lynch is in. We've got her on a, a loan deal for five appearances from the WWE. Uh, we had to give them, I think it was Marty Scurll plus like ten grand. But I thought Becky Lynch helps our women's division. Hopefully, get some good matches, and it's a name that is kind of over in the UK. So she'll wrestle against Kaylee Ray and Nikki Storm for the women's championship. So an E minus 18 there, not great for Brad Maddox, but, or Mad Braddox, don't know who that uh, Brad Maddox guy is, but overall, just starting off the show with a big announcement. So an extremely poor match, Becky Lynch's debuts against Viper, and she wins in 9.37 by pinfall, we'll just say with hard knocks or disarmor, whatever, some sort of suplex, we'll just make it that since it was via pinfall. But E plus 31, we're going to build Becky Lynch up with a bit of momentum. Hopefully, like the Viper, can gain some skills off her. And that can only benefit her going forward. But a good debut there for Becky Lynch. No skill improvements to speak of. And um, the dirt sheet, mostly negatives for Viper. But it's all about aiding her development at the same time. Next up, we've got a promo from the man from the East. It is, of course, Sha Samuels. He says, tonight I will do nothing more than make a statement. I will destroy that mug, Joe Hendry. And I will show that other mug, Robbie Sola, what's going to happen to him if he continues to mess with Sha Samuels. So get a monitor if you want, and if you can, you midget, because this is what's going to happen to you at Crown and Glory. So a bit of a threat there from Sha Samuels, and an E-plus 32 promo. Decent, not great, but we have to keep building people up so we get more promos that are hitting d minuses and hopefully a little bit higher. Negatives there, quite a few. We'll try and sort out his morale once we see the financial uh, predicament of the company at the end of the month. But before his match, we have an announcement from our GM, Mad Braddox, as he steps up from the announce table to make a big announcement. So everyone, we're just two weeks away from Crown and Glory, where all our superstars hope to make a massive name for themselves. But with this theme, I think we're going to crown a star for the future. So we're going to have a match. We're going to have six of the up-and-coming stars and we are wrestling and they'll collide in a match and the winner can get a title shot at any time they want over the next year. It's genius. It's never been done before. What an idea if I do say so myself. So uh, kind of like Money in the Bank or whatever, but uh, Mad Braddox is claiming the idea as his own. So we're going to have that match in at Crown and Glory with the superstars yet to be confirmed. But E-23... Nothing else to add there, apart from a lot of negatives, but again, it's all about building up. Shah Samuels finally gets his match, in a match that had an average crowd reaction and some decent in-ring action. 
Joe Hendry defeated Shah Samuels in 10-16 by pinfall with an STO after a distraction from Robbie Solar. E plus 35. No skill improvements here, but just again, continuing the feud between Shah Samuels and Robbie Solar getting in his head. Hopefully we can get Shah getting a couple more improvements here, because he has a good hand to have. It's just disappointing. A lot of those negatives can be avoided, so hopefully we can build him back up to be a main event player going into 2017. We then have a small hype video confirming in two weeks' time at Crown and Glory that we are wrestling heavyweight championship will be on the line inside a steel cage as Mikey Whiplash battles Dave Mastiff, E46 for that small little vignette. All positives there. And in a match that had an average crowd reaction and some decent in ring action, Marty Scurll defeats Noam Dar in 12 18 by pinfall with a fast roll up. E 36 is quite disappointing for our main event. I was kind of hoping we could use different talents this time, and it's not paid off. No skill improvements to comment upon. Hopefully, though, this doesn't be a negative. But um, these are two guys again I want to push big in the future. Meaning, we have one last segment to try and save the show, which is a promo from Marty Scurll. Grado or Grado. I hope you're watching this. A lesson in destruction has been given here. No longer will you or the world treat me as, as a number two. You will treat me as the number one. The elite talent, the man, the villain. In two weeks, I will take your lovable fat self and drag you from one corner of the arena to the other. And then finally, into the fact that we are wrestling thinks it has a hero. So just remember one thing, Grado, when it comes down to it, Who's the one that's holding the umbrella? That's right, it's me. It's the villain, Mari Skurl. So just highlighting the fact he's won this match and he's gonna prove to the world he's the greatest villain ever by destroying We Are Wrestling Zero at Crowning Glory. So a D43 there is not gonna give us a great show overall. D-39, thankfully it seems like these shows don't affect the rating in any way. So it's really just a way to put people over and stuff before um, the rating uh, popularity sorry, is affected by our event. So that's cool. As I say, it gives us more chance to, to follow storylines um, and stuff like that. At the same time, try and make some money. Yeah, that's what I like about having the TV show. It's maybe not going to affect us in a popularity sense, but there's a lot more to gain from it. Also, before I've done the episode, it turned out Undertaker hasn't got a new contract from WWE, and we're too small to hire him. But one of those things. Uh, so momentum's up at 22, prestige at 20, still at 39th in the world, so that's decent. Um, losing a bit of money so far this month, but hopefully we can make up for that. And just Trent, Barretta's contract's expiring, so that's cool, we'll just give Trent a new contract. He's an enhancement talent, um, not because he's outgrown us, so he's obviously gained much more popularity around the world. Fair play to him, can't complain. That's pretty much it for this episode. It was just to build up a few other storylines before we get to um, Crown and Glory. Next week will be the Go Home Show, and hopefully then we'll have a rundown of the full card before we head into our Crown and Glory event, and then on to 2017. So thank you for watching, guys. Appreciate it as always, and hopefully see you next time for another We Are Wrestling, our time. Bye-bye.